gatherings a few weeks ago Brian was leading us and he introduced us to a holy shout and what better day in the year than to proclaim a holy shout and I'd invite you to share with me as we say these words up on the screen as a holy shout give you give it all you've got let's say together Christ has died Christ is risen Christ will come again Amen. Now that wasn't bad. Okay, that wasn't bad. But I reckon we can do better. One more time. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Amen. We're going to continue proclaiming that in our first song that you've just heard the tune to. Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. Sons of men and angels say... Hallelujah. I'd invite you to stand as we sing this song through together. <laughs>
I hope everyone has managed to receive one of these uh, that you'll need a little bit later, not now, but uh, just to gather and then have a little look around for any that are on chairs and help yourself to one. I hope you were blessed as much as I was on Friday night. Um, for those who were able to join us here in person, we were challenged in so many ways through the music, through the poem that uh, Jane read to us, through God's word, and uh, through the dance that was brought to us. And I know that hearing people as they left on Friday, they'd really been blessed and touched by the Holy Spirit, and we thank God for that, don't we? I would also like to say a big thank you to those who were able to contribute in the retiring collection. That raised £200 for those young people who might find it a little bit more challenging to go to summer school without that financial help. And so we pray for them, that they'll continue to raise their funds, they will go to summer school, and they will be equally blessed as much as they bless us. We're going to share in some prayers just now, and uh, I've asked if the band if it would help us with this. We have five Easter Day prayers, and they're going to lead us into a beautiful song that says, Jesus Christ, I think upon your sacrifice, you became nothing, poured out to death. Many times I've wondered at your gift of life, and I'm in that place once again. But first, I invite you to join us in prayer as the band leads us. Thank you, Lord, in the Lord. Wonderful God, my soul is filled with joy as I celebrate the resurrection today. Thank you that you're alive and that you want a relationship with me. I want to enjoy a relationship with you as well. After Jesus rose from the grave on the first Easter, an angel told people, do not be afraid. I can rise beyond fear this Easter by trusting you. I'm looking forward to new adventures. Together, together, day by day, I love you, Lord. Amen. Dear God, thank you that you make all things new. Thank you for the victory and power in your name. Thank you that you hold the keys over death, that by your might, Jesus was raised from the grave paving the way for us to make, to have new life with you. Thank you that you had a plan, that you made a way. Holy Spirit, we confess our need for you, fresh, new, again. We ask that you renew our hearts, minds, and lives for the days ahead. We pray for your refreshing over us. Amen. Lord God, you love this world so much that you gave your one and only Son, that we might be called your children too. Lord, help us to live in the gladness and grace of Easter Sunday every day. Let us have hearts of thankfulness for your sacrifice. Let us have eyes that look upon your grace and rejoice in our salvation. Help us to walk in your mighty grace and tell your God to uh, tell your good news to the world. All for your glory do we pray, Lord. Amen. Our Lord, as I celebrate Easter and the triumphant victory of Jesus Christ over death and hell and sin, I fall down before you and worship you. I cry with others around the world, worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honour and glory and praise. All of creation bows before you, Lord Jesus, because you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, who has won the victory and conquered death. Dear Lord, draw my thoughts that are towards you every minute of every day, but especially the sister. Help me resist the temptation to focus on the painful things of this earthly life, and help me <coughs> control my thoughts so they don't sink my faith or joy in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Let's share the family prayer together before we sing this song through. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not 
his temptation will deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And once again I look upon the cross where you died. I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside. Once again, I thank you. Once again, I pour out my love. Lord, we just want to lift our hearts to you this morning, all of us, because your spirit is here, your love is moving amongst us, your praise is in our hearts and we want to express it with our lips. Lord, we want to say this morning, thank you, thank you for your love and all that that love has personally made to each one of us. Something different, something of forgiveness, something of healing, something of <coughs> strength in their weakness. But your gifts, Lord, are personal and given to us by name, acclaiming us as your children if we've come to you and, and sought you as Saviour. Then with your Saviour comes friendship, comes support, comes every need that we have. We know it's known to you. And so, Lord, this morning, read our hearts, read our needs, 
and hear our spoken or unspoken prayer because Lord we want to tell you again thank you and uh, we love you in Jesus name Amen Lord, thank you for the cross and for the efficacious blood shed on our behalf. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, because the cross is relevant for today mm -hmm. and in our time. I am the resurrection of the life. He that believeth on me, even though he die, yet shall he live. Lord, we thank you for those wonderful words this morning. May we live in thee through your cross and in your name. Amen. Amen. Let's finish this time together. I can just sing that chorus again, please, with Jake. And once again, I look upon the cross where you died. heart in this morning. <laughs> well, if you are, hidden in this hall, there are five Cadbury's tree mates. There's going to be a, a video that comes up, a little song that uh, reminds us of the resurrected Jesus. And as that plays, you can sing along with it if you, if you know it, or it's quite an easy little catchy tune. Um, but if you are young at heart and you want to hunt for one of the five eggs, you can keep this and find them. One day when Jesus was alone with his disciples, Told them of the things to come The Son of Man will die but rise up three days later They didn't understand him What did he say? It all made sense on that third day Jesus 
Jesus. He has risen, death is not the end. Jesus. He has risen to the throne. He's coming back to Christ to a cross outside the city. They crucified him with two thieves. One ask, Lord, please remember me when in your kingdom. All those who trust the Son have eternal life. Today with me. Has risen, death is not the end. Jesus, He has risen to the throne. He's coming back to reign. One day when Jesus then appeared to His disciples, they saw the prophecy was true. Showed his scars so they could see death was defeated. Jesus had died, was buried, the greatest cost. Jesus gave all to save the lost. Jesus, he has risen, death is not the end. Anyway, thank you. Well done. Did you find all five? Who found the one that was uh, down here? Yeah. Yeah. I could have found a fake spot that from where you sat on. Yeah. Um, did anybody find one in the box of tissues? Yes. Yeah. Yes, well done. Uh, anybody find one over towards the piano area? No? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, anybody find one on the bookcase at the back? Oh, there, there. Well done. Uh, and then there was one more, and I can't remember what it was. Um, <laughs> Somewhere in this hall was an A. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, oh, I know where it is. Did anybody find one right at the back behind the little uh, window notice board? Oh, first one there, have it. <laughs> so, why do we have Easter egg eggs? Well, they're often used, aren't they, as a symbol of new life, something that uh, Easter reminds us Jesus offers and came to die for. They can also represent the tomb that Jesus was buried in, uh, who when he died, he was buried in, and then he came alive from, and the stone was rolled away, and uh, that uh, reminds us of that. Rolling eggs. Have you ever had a go, go at that? Yes. yes. One of those favourite pastimes. Apparently they do this on Easter uh, Monday in America. And even on the White House lawn. Uh, selected few get to go and roll on the White House lawn. Some think this is a reminder of the stone being rolled away. So this Easter, whether you get a little cabbage cream egg or one of those giant ones, just like to say I've had none. Well, actually, that's not true. I was sent one way back in February. Uh, just trust me, it doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but when you're eating your eggs or uh, sharing over a, perhaps an Easter meal this uh, Easter Sunday, or in whatever way uh, you choose to celebrate the rest of Resurrection Sunday, remember, it's all about Jesus.
we're going to uh, give in our offering just now as Jesus has given to us in such an amazing way. We are going to give in our financial giving back to his work here in Kikoka. Plates are at the front if you'd like to do that when you're comfortable. placed us in and for the gifts that we've placed before you just now we pray you bless, bless them you will bless the giver and help us to use them wisely for your kingdom's growth here in Kikoka. Amen. We're going to uh, listen now to the singing group as they bring us the words see what a morning of also known as the resurrection song.
Today's Bible reading is going to come up on the screen that um, tells that story that we've just sung about. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started to the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of cock linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to raise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they had been staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb, crying. As she wept, she bent, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated there. Jesus' body, where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where he is, you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he has, what he had said to them. And she told them that he had said those things to her. Before we look at that scripture reading a little bit more, we're going to sing once again, O joyful sound, O glorious hour, when Christ by his almighty power arose and left the grave. He lives, he lives, I know that my Redeemer lives. If you'd like to stand, you're welcome to as we sing this song together. O joyful sound, O glorious hour, Oh, 
He lives, I know that my Redeemer lives. I hope that's your testimony this morning. What a, a hope-loaded proclamation that that is. He lives, I know my Redeemer lives. And after we've witnessed and shared the events of Good Friday and the very different forms of telling the Easter story that we experience, isn't it great that Sunday is here? We looked on Friday at looking up at the cross. Do you remember the little cardboard crosses uh, that uh, hopefully you took away and perhaps you put them somewhere to look up to, to remind you of that sacrifice of Jesus. We looked up at the cross. Today, we look through the cross. That's what your little card cut out is. Today's Bible passage will be familiar words to many of us. John's account of the discovery that the tomb was empty and that Jesus had risen from the dead is the central pillar of our faith. It's central to our hopes, to our joys, to our testimony regarding our walk with Jesus. And we see the story today through three pairs of eyes who were close to Jesus. First, there's Mary, the first to discover the empty tomb. From her eyes, we see confusion and questions and a searching. Where have you taken my Lord? Why is the tomb empty? Why has his body been removed? She runs to inform two of Christ's closest disciples and they too come running to the tomb. The disciple who, whom Jesus loved, presumably John himself, arrived and his first view is from a distance. He arrived first, looked in, but did not enter. And then finally there's Simon Peter, Peter who catches up and as he always did, jumped in both feet straight into the tomb to see that Christ was no longer laying there, wanting to experience firsthand the reality of what seems to have transpired. I wonder what your reaction to these events is this morning. Searching and questioning like Mary, looking from a, a distance like John or at the heart of the resurrection truth like Simon and Peter. I love the next sentence in the narrative that says, finally the other disciple who had reached the tomb also went in. He saw and believed. I think it's probably because it's my testimony that for a time I looked from a distance. But then Jesus invited me in and I saw and believed. This is the most immensely pivotal moment in the story. But to this point, they'd only looked up at the cross just days before, seeing Jesus is in, in intense pain and distress, literally dying on that cross, raised up high. They looked up in gaze, but still not understanding that this had been the plan and intention of the Lord God Almighty all along. In this moment, in that too, the disciples saw and believe. He no longer was saw Jesus hanging up high on the cross, but was now seeing through and beyond the cross to the resurrection life that Jesus offers. Jesus is risen. His atoning sacrifice in place in, in place of John on that cross himself suddenly made sense. He was start, starting to see the reality of what had happened and was starting to see life through 
the cross. You see, three things strike me about the little exercise linked to our reading today of looking through the cross that are so significant for us here now today in the 21st century. Firstly, let me share some more pictures with you. Aaliyah, could you just go on to the next slide, please? I don't know if you know this place. Lockerans, I can't pronounce it, farm at Kelty, very close to here. There, it's a, a private uh, home now, but once was a farm. And at uh, the officers' divisional retreat a few weeks ago, Captain K. Blues from Livingston shared these pictures in her prayers. And as she drove past, she noticed this window that you can see on the screen just now in the side of the house. A beautiful plain glass cross in the side of the building. And she was bold enough to go and knock on the door and ask if uh, the owner wouldn't mind her taking these photographs, which they kindly said was fine. But to her surprise, the owner invited her in to see what was on the other side. And this is what she saw. Isn't that just beautiful? Seeing the world through the cross. The event of Easter that demarks history in such a powerful way offers us a new perspective and helps us to focus on what is important. Sometimes not just what we think is important, but when we look at the world through the cross, through God's eyes, we see a different perspective. For John, he entered the tomb, saw events through the cross, and believed, seeing the world differently. We're challenged to look up at the cross in adoration and worship, but then we are called to look at the world through the cross and to look at our own lives through the cross. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and life in all the fullness. Secondly, a, a few years ago now, I undertook a, a night school course, you know, one of these little courses you can go on for each uh, evening for a few weeks and learn something. And I thought I'd uh, have a go at photography. Can't say I produced anything wonderful from it, but it was good fun and I learned a lot. And on the second or third week, we were all given a little cardboard rectangle. Apparently it's known as a view frame or a viewing frame or a viewfinder. We were shown how to hold it up in order to block out the periphery, the unnecessary, so that we could compose our shot and focus in on what was important selecting the best position and looking through the frame. The ability to block out the unnecessary is so difficult for us today. In a world rich in information and in a fast paced world, it's hard to block out the parts that are not needed or that even stop us from flourishing. When uh, Mary saw the empty tomb, she struggled to understand. Arriving at the time and presented with the resurrection scene, her mind was crowded with other questions and what happened, fears and worries about where her Lord's body had been taken. The reality of what she was seeing in front of her was too hard at that moment to grasp. If only she could have seen things through the cross. For each of us at Easter, we will have things in our lives that are crowding in, that need blocking out, just like the car blocks out the periphery and we see just through the cross. Pains, unforgiveness, 
worries, frustration, sadness. This Easter, we're invited to look at our lives and their course and to look at them through the cross. This instrument of torture, this cross of death, this mystery allows us to see a truly transformed perspective. As the priest and theologian Graham Tomlin puts it, because faced with the truism that life to what tend that life leads towards death, Christian faith begs to differ. Instead, it boldly asserts that death leads towards life. Because of Christ's resurrection, when we put our sinful lives to death and hand them over to him, his resurrection life becomes our resurrection life. And finally, on Friday, for those able to attend, we were given a, a small cardboard cross that I've already mentioned. I don't know if you still have it. But for this moment, just take that card that I've given you with the cross cut out and take a look through it. What do you see? Maybe take a look at someone in the congregation or if you're at home, at a photograph of someone. Look at them through the cross. If we believe the cross Jesus bore changes the world, changes our relationship with God, changes our status from being a slave to fear and death, if we believe the events that took place 2,000 years ago and that we considered just three days ago, transform the world and offers transformation for our lives if we believe all these things looking through the cross will make a difference as you look at others through that cross now what do you see do you see them as someone worthy of jesus sacrifice do you see them as accepted and worthy of such a sacrifice? Do you see them as a child of God who sent his one and only son to save them from their sins? Do you see them as a brother and sister in Christ? Do you see that you and they are loved and that we are called to love one another? through the eyes that look through the cross. Our reading this morning from John ended with these words. Thinking he was the gardener, Mary said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me what you have done with him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, and she turned to him and cried out, Bravo and I. At that moment, Mary saw the Lord Jesus Christ through the cross and into resurrection life. And I simply ask you, do you see Jesus today? On this Resurrection Sunday, is it time for you to begin seeing life through the cross and not just look at the cross? If so, come to Jesus and acknowledge him as Rabboni. He has risen. He is risen indeed. We're going to sing the beautiful words in Christ alone. My hope is found. He is my life, my strength, my song. And this song challenges us to look at life through the cross, through Jesus Christ. And if it's time this morning to do that for you, then do come and use our place of prayer. Or perhaps you just want to come and say thank you, Lord, for the resurrection life that you have received. But let this be a time, a response for us all, to what Jesus offers.
today. as we look this Easter through the cross into a world of pain and in so much need of your love. We bring to mind those who we come into contact with regularly. Our friends and our family, our work colleagues, our neighbours. And we begin to look at them through the cross. Lord, we begin to look at the world that is war-torn and in so much grief and pain and agony and, and strife. Help us to look at it through the cross as the world that you came to die for. And Father, as we this Easter celebrate the resurrected Jesus, may our lives reflect his as we claim that resurrection power as our own in and through the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Amen. Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son, endless is the victory thou over death has won. We cannot possibly have this without singing this hymn, can we? If you're able, I'd invite you um, to stand as we sing triumphantly of our risen King Jesus. <laughs>
the benediction. Thank you to Irene for the flowers, but also can I say thank you to some other people as well. The flowers bless us each week, and on this week we have a few other things that have blessed us. Thank you Trevor and Elizabeth for the cards that you've all received uh, for making those. Thank you Mary for the beautiful uh, Easter garden that was there on Friday and looks so much transformed today uh, because of Resurrection Sunday. Uh, thank you to, to John and Rowan for the time and effort that you put in with the band, the singing group, and all the members of the band and singing group who really blessed our worship this weekend. Uh, and thank you, Chip, for persevering on the piano with that piece of music. <laughs> I think he's given a few sleepless nights. <laughs> it came out well. Thank you ever so much. Uh, Let's Connect is not on this week. We're having a week's break uh, to recover. And, uh, but there is a ladies' fellowship in the evening, 7 o'clock. If you'd like more details, have a word with Mary before you go. I'm um, just finalising the rotors for summer. They'll be available next week for uh, flowers and coffee, etc. Uh, please remember that next Sunday there is a safe and sound video, the safe garden video that we're asked to show each year following coffee. If you're able to stay for that, that would be great. Uh, I'm away this week for a few days, but I will have my mobile if you need me, don't, don't hesitate to get in touch. Um, please remember that there's dates on the newsletter of forthcoming events. Next Sunday, candidate Rachel Frost, we're going to hold that as our candidate Sunday, and she's going to come and speak uh, with us and share with us next Sunday. Uh, in June, we have a family fun day on Friday the 3rd of June, on one of those bank holidays, and Jane's going to bring us information about that in the coming weeks and then uh, we have visited and joined by a friend of mine John Froud from the Zephaniah Trust who uh, works uh, in churches in and around Bradford who's going to come and share with us some of that family weekend and then at the end of June the 25th and 26th of June is our core anniversary and uh, we will eventually at last be able to welcome having to postpone it after over two and three years um, the Scottish Fellowship Band and also uh, Captain Major Caroline and Captain Philip James are going to be leading our weekend. Finally, uh, just a reminder that we have some hall hires um, and a, a raise, one of the hall hires raised a concern about people being in and around the general purpose hall. Just to remind that when they're hiring that, they've got some safeguarding uh, procedures they need to follow, so just avoid those times, Monday evenings, Wednesday mornings, and Saturday mornings. And now may the God of peace, who brought back again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you through the power of Jesus all that is pleasing to him. To him be the glory and honour and praise and majesty now and forevermore. Amen. Good morning, God bless.